It's been a treacherous year for journalists. In hotspots around the world, 106 of our colleagues have been killed, lives lived and lost in the service of the truth. The most dangerous place on earth for the fourth estate, Pakistan. Prominent investigative journalist Saeed Salam Shahazad disappeared two days after writing about this Al-Qaeda attack on a naval base in Karachi. Despite being repeatedly threatened, he was well known for scathing reports about the infiltration by Al-Qaeda into Pakistan's military. His mutilated body was found in a canal. There was no investigation, no arrest and no justice. We always raise our voice uh, when our journalist is killed. We feel ourselves that we are not alone struggling here for the protection of journalists, struggling here for the freedom of speech and the uh, right to write story freely. As the Pakistani press mourn another colleague, the International Federation of Journalists is working with local unions, pushing for an inquiry into Shahazad's death. <laughs> All journalist murders in Pakistan, apart from that of American Daniel Pearl, have gone unpunished. Every November, the IFJ holds a global impunity campaign to highlight the failures of governments to bring killers to justice. It's a mammoth task, Violation to media rights can take many forms, down the barrel of a gun, police intimidation, or attacks from an angry mob. Hordes of Mubarak supporters stormed the square, and all hell breaks loose. The Mubarak regime demonized the Western media, and to a frenzied crowd, journalists were fair game. I was sort of set upon by a mob. It was like a flying rugby tackle by a mob. My fear was if we went to the ground, that's when the knives would come out. The ABC's foreign correspondent team were forced to take shelter in a tourist shop before they were able to leave, a luxury not afforded Egyptian reporters. Our Egyptian colleagues have to, have to live through it and have continued to do so you know, post Tahrir Square. Things didn't get better. The most vulnerable are the bloggers. They can't afford lawyers and can disappear without a trace. Like 20-year-old Syrian dissident Tal al Mullah. It was too dangerous to film openly here. SBS Dateline video journalist Yara Bumelam went to Syria in December to find out what happened. I uh, went into Syria at a time when the uprisings hadn't occurred yet and the feeling that I had going in was one of dread because I was going undercover on a tourist visa. I was doing a story that was clearly very sensitive. <laughs> Others haven't lived to tell the story. Award-winning photojournalist Tim Hetherington had a relentless drive to document the impacts of war. Often when I'm working in a very pressured situation, my, I can almost flick the off switch and go into a default of filming. And later on I, I come to and it shocks me what I've done. But it does have the side that it is very dangerous. Tim's last Twitter post read, in besieged Libyan city of Misrata, indiscriminate shelling by Gaddafi forces. No sign of NATO. He was killed by mortar fire. Just get your head down. 2011 has also offered stories of triumph and resilience. Amid the rubble of the Christchurch earthquake, the press newspaper was still fit to print. Staff managed to put the paper out the very next day. We know the value of a newspaper to its community. Without power, you have no television news. Uh, you can't plug your laptop in or your PC and fire up the internet to find out what's going on. So the paper being delivered ends up being um, fundamentally vital to your community. Some reassuring news in a year that has left the industry with 106 fewer journalists.